Now there's one other spring here, and let me call this to your attention. Um, this spring right here, okay, this spring. Let me follow it down. This is the brake spring here. It's attached to this. It's attached to this little array. Anyway, this spring here attaches to this kind of braking assembly. The emergency brake lever is this little rod here. And uh, this one end of this spring goes into that brake assembly, that emergency brake assembly, the way it is there. And the other end, this hooks onto, let's see, the other end of that spring, which is dangling free now, connects to, when the transmission is in place, there's a brake arm. And this will go into the brake arm. This will fit into that brake arm. So I'm just saving this to connect later once the transmission is in place. And uh, then the second spring will be attached on this. There's the other end of the parking brake. This little thing works up and down. This little thing right here works up and down to break the, break the machine. All right, so this is where we are now. And then up above. This one is destined to go around the transmission pulley. Okay, on to the brakes now. First of all, you want to clean off around this. This is and put in place. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is clean off the grease around this uh, transmission spindle and around this little place here. This is one of two brake shoes. This wheel then goes on next. You'll see there's a half moon key. The wide part of this disc brake, this is the disc itself that rotates and there's a brake shoe behind it a brake pad and a brake pad in front of it and uh, the caliper will squeeze the two brake shoes together as this rotates bringing the machine to a stop. So the first thing I want to do is put in the key. Now this goes in this disc with the smooth flat side to the back and this raised uh, portion sticks out front. You know, when I say back, I mean toward the transmission. So the smooth part is back toward the transmission. Let's see if I can get that on. Okay, and now the uh, disc is on. There's uh, right behind it. Let's see if I can point it. This is the disc, the brake pad behind it is that square little piece. Now the caliper looks like this and it's going to bolt. Let me show you the back side of this. Do you see the, uh, this has a little piston and a second little piston. 
right there. These move in and out as this lever is turned. If it goes, it's a little bit offset. The arm is, the pull arm on this, it's a little bit offset in the back. So that little arm moves forward, backwards, brake, don't brake, brake, don't brake. And it actually pushes these little this little piston. It pushes this little piston pin in or out. And right now I've pushed them both in. But when I turn the uh, lever, see how the pin popped out? And that piston or pin will press against the brake pad in here, which will push push the pad against the turning rotor and it will bring the rotor to a stop. It will pinch the rotor and bring the uh, transmission and, and uh, lawnmower to a stop. So, first piece that goes inside here is a little metal plate so that the force of the the brake shoe will evenly uh, apply force to the brake shoe. The next piece is the brake shoe itself. And, and here is that. You can flip them around backwards as wear occurs. You can flip it upside down instead of putting it in like that. I could flip it upside down and put it in like that to get the unworn side to press against the the uh, disc, the rotating disc. So I just position that in there, holding it all carefully together. Then with the disc in place, as it is, this disc right here in place, you just attach this together, making sure the insides don't fall out, and you run those two bolts to get in, holding the caliper and brake pads all together. In the case of this transmission, I'm going to take this little screwdriver tip here, and I'm going to push it right through. It goes right through that far into the transmission case. Likewise, this hole down below goes all the way, goes that far into the transmission case. So this hole and this hole <coughs> are entrances, essentially, into this transmission case. <coughs> there are two ways of lubricating this transmission. One is with grease, which uh, is fairly difficult to leak or drain out, and this one is filled with grease. The other is with oil, gear oil, like 90 weight gear oil or double zero, zero zero gear oil, <clears throat> which is really thick stuff. A lot of people say, well, how do I get, uh, how do I drain what's in there out, and how do I put more in? And one way to gain access without drilling a separate tap or hole somewhere, because there are no filler holes on this, is to just take one or both of, or just take one or the other of these two bolts out and use that as a filler hole or that as a filler hole and just pump gear oil into that hole. And um, if you have old oil inside the crankcase, or the uh, transmission case, just drain it out one of these holes. So all you have to do is take one of these bolts of the um, brake calipers completely out and then that will give you a hole all the way in and all the way in as you can see. I just thought I'd point that out before I put the calipers on and close it up. Alright and here it is Here's the, it's actually that way, 
<clears throat> but I have the lawnmower, you know, tipped tipped up in the air, so the nose is heading down. So <clears throat> there is the uh, the brake lever the brake arm, the two bolts that hold it on, one is here, that's one of the bolts, this is the other bolts, this bolt, this is just a fulcrum, and remember now if you remove this bolt and this bolt completely, those bolts go all the way through to the transmission, so if you need to uh, shoot a little gear oil in there, or even grease, uh, if you take one of these two bolts out and attach the uh, the output of the grease gun, it could be a hand pump or uh, gear oil, number two gear oil, just, uh, uh, when I say number two, I mean zero zero gear oil or um, 90 weight gear oil, which will tend to leak out, I think, unless your seals are really good. And, now, use my finger. This is the caliper. Inside are two metal plungers, or little pistons, that press forward. It will press that next item, which is the brake shoe, the edge of the brake shoe itself. Let's see if I can get a light on that so you can see that better. Okay. You see the uh, disc, which is sandwiched in between the two brake shoes. Anyway, the piston in the right right hand caliper, which is right here, there's going to be a little piston here, a little piston here, and it's going to press this brake shoe against the middle piece there that looks like the edge of a washer that, which uh, rotates, and the other brake shoe which is fixed mounted against the back wall there. So, squeezing those pistons in by pulling this brake arm is going to squeeze these two brake shoes together against that, um, squeeze these two brake shoes together against that uh, rotor in the middle. And that's how the braking operates. Um, this is the transmission back in. Here's a shot of the transmission itself. That's a 4360-9. A foot, yeah, it's probably a foot. There's the label on the transmission itself. And back in here you can see the belt is now around the pulley wheel. The spring is in place. The spring goes through that right there. Transmission's in place. This is a foot or a peerless 4360-9. Foot peerless to come say could have been the same but I believe this is a foot F-O-O-T-E 4360-9 transmission. Many of them are the same, just very slight uh, differences. But this one is a foot, I think. At this point, I think I'm ready to put the wheels on and lower it down. <laughs> 